Hey, I'm Srini, host and founder of the Unmistakable Creative Podcast and the creator of Maximize Your Output with Mem. And in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about something that a lot of people have been asking me about, which is what is Memex? How does it work? How do I use it? And one of the things that you will often hear me say or see me write is this idea that your brain is a network, not a hierarchy. So what do I mean by that? So if you think about the way information is organized inside of your brain, it's all associated. So I could say the word high school, I could say the word baby, and suddenly it would trigger whatever memories you have associated with those words because of the fact that memory is contextual and that word cues up memories inside of your brain. And the thing with most note-taking apps is that you have to put a lot of effort and time into making your notes easier to find and use in the future. Even if you're using something like a second brain methodology, you actually have to remember what folder to put things in, what project folder, what area to put them in, and if you forget, then you can't find the thing that you're looking for, or you have to tag and link things properly. And what Memex does is something really magical. It pretty much negates the need for tags and links altogether, and it allows for spontaneous recall. So even if you had not thought to use a note that you had, it will actually surface while you're working on something. And we'll go into a couple of examples of this in the video itself, but one, I highly recommend that you read Stephanie Pope's article on the Mem blog titled Writing with Memex, and I'll include a link to that in the description below. But the key understanding that makes this work is a abundance of knowledge. So for Memex to really work the way it's intended to and to have the experience that Stephanie writes about in this article, you actually need an abundance of notes inside of Mem. And I think it, it roughly would say you start to see the power of this around 500 notes, and I have about 7,000 Mems inside of Mem. And so that's the key idea I want you to keep in mind when we go through these concepts. And with that in mind, I've also included a link to a landing page for the ultimate guide to building your second brain in MEM, which will be available probably sometime this week. So if you're interested in getting that, just click on the link, enter your email address on the landing page. Now let's get to the video. One thing I recommend before you try to understand the concepts in this video is to read the article on the MEM blog that Stephanie Pope wrote uh, titled Writing with MX, and I'll include a link in the description below. But you'll see here that I decided to do something meta to explain how this actually all works. I actually decided to show you how I used MemX to create this video about how MemX works. So the mem that you're looking at was actually the outline for this video. And you can see here that everything I said in the introduction, where you see my face on the screen, was all up here. And so, you know, Reading that article really clarified a lot of things about why Memex is so powerful and why it actually negates the need in a lot of ways for bidirectional links and tagging. Bidirectional links and tags are still great to organize information and to connect ideas. The first thing you see on the right-hand side is this concept called similar mems. And so what this does is just based on the content inside of this mem, it will bring up a bunch of similar mems that I have inside of the database. Now, one thing Stephanie said in that video was that mem works associatively and conceptually. So part of why there's so many different similar mems here and why this is so useful is because of the fact that I've captured a lot of notes in mem. And that's the thing that has to happen for memx to be really useful and powerful in the way that she's talking about. The more that you actually have inside of mem to work with, the more that one mem can associate with others because you need a critical mass of knowledge. And the truth is you actually need an abundance of knowledge to really see the power of this. So you see here, the first thing is just mems that are similar to this mem. But what's even cooler is that any bi-directional link that I've included in here, you also see mems related to those mems. So for example, I included this link somewhere here for uh, non-linear associative networks. And you can see here, there's 29 other links to nonlinear associative networks or related MEMS to that one MEM. So you end up being able to see a lot of stuff that you might not have even thought to use. So even if you don't tag something properly, you actually are able to have spontaneous recall and retrieval. So you might just have ideas surface that you didn't think to use before. So you can see here, I have this uh, note, none of our thoughts and ideas exist in isolation, which is all about the concept of network thinking. And you can see here, that every single note that's somewhat related to this concept right here shows up here. What's happening here is it's spontaneous recall 
where even if you didn't necessarily tag it or link it to this particular note that I'm working on, you're still able to see all of these different notes. Now let's go into search really quick. So searches is actually cool because it brings up anything. So I'm going to just do a search for the, the keyword transcript. And you can see here, I have a bunch of different results that show up. Some are actual podcast transcripts. Some are mems where I mentioned the word transcript, but you can see here the, the first sort of result that comes up is anything that's tagged UC dat dash transcript, which are the most important in the hierarchy of what I'm looking for. In this case, mem basically says, okay, so you must be looking for transcripts to podcast episodes because that's the type of transcript that he puts in here most frequently. But there are other types of transcripts as well. You can see here in the ultimate guide to building a second brain, I mention the word transcript. So it's bringing up everything that might be relevant, even if it's not necessarily tagged with that keyword in particular. But let's go into one other example of how this works. I'm going to go into a blog post that I started writing about how network thinking will change knowledge work. So I started just compiling all these concepts based on some of the things that I learned from Tiago Porte's book, Building a Second Brain, where I basically wanted to have what he calls an archipelago of ideas. So I'm not starting from scratch. I had this idea yesterday thinking about, okay, how will network thinking change knowledge work? How it'll make us less distracted because of the fact that knowledge inside of a network is much more powerful than knowledge inside of hierarchies or knowledge that lives in isolation. So I started just putting together a bunch of notes and a bunch of thoughts. I basically grabbed a couple of quotes from Stephanie's article that I mentioned here. But then if you look here, you'll see how many similar mems show up just based on whatever is in this mem. It gives me all these different potential other notes that I could use while writing this article. And again, anything that I have tagged as a blog post idea shows up here because the tags are related. And you can see here, any mem that is related to any bi-directional link is in here. So for example, I probably mentioned the words accumulate a critical mass of knowledge in several hundred notes because it's really the foundation of starting to see the power of mem. This is something I realized just a few days ago is that when I was working with the client, one of the challenges that he was having was that he couldn't quite grasp why this was so powerful. And what I realized was that he didn't have enough information inside of Mem to see how it all connects together. Because again, you know, for something like MemX to work the way it's supposed to, uh, if you want to be able to have uh, the ability to connect ideas and make unexpected connections, you need other ideas to connect them to. And the more that you have different ideas to connect them to do, the, the better it's going to work. All right. If you see here, what I have are hundreds of different notes. And so you end up having what I call nonlinear associative networks of knowledge that are similar to the nonlinear associative networks inside of your brain. And so MemX at a certain point basically starts to make your second brain function quite a lot like your first one, where random ideas just start to come up even if you don't tag them or use bi-directional links, just because of the fact that there are certain words in here, these basically start to show you on the sidebar all the related content to whatever is in this mem. And the other day, after reading Stephanie's article, I just started writing a blog post and suddenly I started to see that I had all these other notes, even though I hadn't thought to link them, that I could actually use in the blog post that I was writing in the same way that I'm writing this blog post. So I knew off the top of my head that I had a couple of different ideas here that I wanted to use. But let's say, for example, I go into MEMS related to critical mass of knowledge. And I can see here, some of this is right here already inside of here, but some of it is not. For example, I just realized, okay, look, there's knowledge generation cycle which is another concept. And I don't have that here. So what I can do is say, oh, okay, cool. I think I'll probably want to use that since it's not here. And now the other thing that happens is if we go back to MEMS related to whatever bi-directional link I've added, you'll see that now there are MEMS related to the knowledge generation cycle that end up showing up here. So th this is actually a good way to think of it. This is something I was explaining as part of the ultimate guide to building a second brain in MEM. And, and that's that MEMX is like a second brain 
but it has amnesia. And your job is to basically act as a surgeon whose job it is to help MEM, your patient, restore its memory by adding more and more notes to MEM. So it works very much like your actual brain. It starts to reveal ideas and connections that you wouldn't have thought to make necessarily, but it all depends on the amount of information that you have inside of MEM. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And so that's what really makes it powerful. Let me go through an example from scratch of how this might work. So let's just say I have an idea for a blog post titled How the Progress Principle Helps People Achieve Their Goals. And let's say that's it. I don't have anything else in there. So right now it says there are no related mems, but let's just say write a couple of sentences. So part of the reason there's no related mems inside of there is because we haven't written anything other than this title. And so then, you know, what I'm going to say is the progress principle is a concept based on the work of Harvard professor, Teresa Amabili. According to her, one of our greatest sources of motivation is visible progress. When we see ourselves making progress towards our goals. All right. So now let's look at what happens. So you notice that all of a sudden, all I did was basically write in a introduction and suddenly all the different notes that I have that might be related to this concept show up right here. And I could actually then start to use these notes inside of this blog post. And that is actually what makes Memex so powerful is the fact that you notice how we have no tags and no links here, but right when we started to write a couple of sentences, there are probably three or four sentences here. It's just the introduction to a blog post. Every other note that I could potentially use in this blog post that I have inside of MEM, some of which have content in them, some of which don't, shows up. And that's actually how MEMX works. But I think that the key takeaway that you should take from this video is that you have to have an abundance of knowledge to see these kinds of results. So you notice the reason that this pr produced so many different MEMs that are similar to this MEM is simply because of the fact that I have captured so much. And you know that's why I always say the more that you capture inside of MEM, the more you're going to be able to create with what you've captured. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll be sure to include a link to the article that Stephanie wrote, which you should all read because I think this video will make even more sense. And if you're interested in learning how to take smart notes that lead to what you just see in terms of similar MEMS, be sure to check out our free course on how to take smart notes. We'll include a link in the description below.